So for the first time this season, we're going to look at some things in detail up at the big screen. I don't think anything that happened yesterday. I went to the game and it was it was great to be back at a football match. It's the yeah. first thing to say. It was really terrific to be back at a match. I think most people who went to that game yesterday expected the scoreline that happened. Yeah. Maybe not the way that it transpired, but certainly the scoreline. And it just underlines where these two great London clubs are in very different positions. Oh, gosh. One, one club's going like that. One yeah. club's just been like that for five, six years now, and Arsenal aren't moving. They're not going anywhere. Chelsea are building through the, uh, through the youth scheme, building, uh, buying new players, they're buying good players, new manager, and they're slowly finding their way to where they need to be. Arsenal, a flat line at the moment, completely. Yeah. And Chelsea won the Champions League, mm. arguably without really a, a mm. free-scoring centre-forward. Yeah. So they said, right, I know what we'll do. We'll, oh. go and, uh, <laughs> we'll go and solve that problem. And on the basis of yesterday, they are going to terrify a lot of teams because they appear to have solved that problem. Lukaku was amazing, wasn't he? Yeah. <sighs> Big, strong, quick. He's now lean. Yeah. He's a different player that went to the World Cup in 2018. He said it himself. He went, for some reason, I packed on a lot of muscle. I packed on a lot of weight. I think he was close to two stone heavier. Now he looks lean, he looks quick. And we've got some examples here, Mark, of how good he was and how good Chelsea were on the day. And it's something that Arsenal just couldn't get the grips with. You know, when you're doing your analysis behind the scenes, Mikel Arteta and his men, they must have looked at Lukaku last season. Because this is a goal that he scores that I've seen so many times in Serie A last season. What you can't do, Dion, is you can't get pinned by him. You can already see at this point when Chelsea are working one or two passes now, he's got his man... Absolutely pinned. Perfect. He's got that right arm across. Perfect. Pablo Mari has got no chance of the ball goes no into chance. his feet. And he's got no, he's got no um, defender on his toes, so the ball can be rolled in. As a centre forward, I want my defender there. I want to be able to feel my defender. And then what happens is, and you'll see Lukaku do it, yeah. you go onto the side, ball there, man, defender. But that's very Perfect. difficult for any centre half because he's so big. So is the bigger criticism not, Don, that they shouldn't allow that pass yeah. to be played so easily? They but should what, cut off that route. Yes, once Jorginho gets away from his marker, who he shouldn't, by the way, in the middle of the yeah. park, you shouldn't be getting done Country, that easy. Yeah. But you look at the midfield boys there and you just see, let's just see, see if this is working. You look at those midfield boys there yeah. and that route is just far too easy for that ball to go into Lukaku's mm. feet. They have to try and narrow up. You know, it could, it could go either way. It could, be, it could be clipped into his chest, could be clipped into his feet. Yeah. They have to narrow up there. They've got, to be, they've got to be a little bit more savvy. They're not doing anything, Don. Those, those three not. players aren't doing anything They're all ball there. watching. Where's the danger? They know where the danger Forces. is. So you have to force Jorginho to play it wide or to somebody the else. The danger yeah. is, don't let them go through the middle, especially when the best player's there. Yeah. Force them wide and then we'll, we'll regroup. They don't do either. But when, you're, when you're firefighting like this, in this moment in the game, and it's difficult when you're in the heat of battle. It's easy when you're standing here saying, he should be there, he should be there, he should do that. When you're in this sort of atmosphere and you're not getting hold of the ball, that's where you need a little bit of experience for one of these guys in the middle of the park. Not so much Smith Rowe, mm. but the two midfield players, Lukonga and Xhaka. Mm. Someone has to check their shoulders and go, Lukaku's got him pinned. Yeah. I've got to stop that ball. And even if you can't stop the ball into him, you're then going to create a 2v1. And you can maybe nick the ball off him, but this is dream scenario look, for look Lukaku. Look at that posture. Look at this his is posture. Dream. Look at the posture of Lukaku's down, legs bent, yep. strength. Who is it, Pablo? Pablo Mari. Pablo yeah. Mari. Up, upright, yep. like that. You can't defend upright, not against the strongest man in, in the league. You can't and where, where I think Kieran Tini's a little bit unlucky, who had a real tough afternoon. He played well, but he had runners everywhere. So he's trying to take care of lots of runners from Chelsea going in these areas. But they're va he's vacating that space. Yeah. And there was too much room. But he's got to, has he? Because he's got to go with his yeah, runner. That's, yeah, that, that's where it all stems from. And when you're yeah. firefighting, you can take it right, right from, the, from the very start, hold a midfield player, stop the ball, get into Lukaku. That's job number one. Yeah. Then what can you do after that? Now, I'm afraid Saka has to take a little bit of responsibility because he's not back in. But he can see that, Saka. He can see it, can but see now it. the distances are too big. Once these distances it. for professional footballers are too big... Saka can't get back in. And then look at Lukaku's strength, the Pablo Mari. Yeah. Get off. I mean, people, people around the world might be saying, is that not a foul? It's not. He's got more desire. Just too much strength, Chris, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with Lukaku there. You see this in... No, I mean, that, that's just it, what you, what you say, Mark. He, he's got the strength. I mean, I'll ask Dion a question in a minute. He's, he, he knows exactly what he's doing and he's, he's used his strength to the best of yeah. his ability with the, with the right outcome. Yeah. No he foul there, He stays Chris. behind the ball so he doesn't run offside. No foul, Chris, no is foul. No foul? No, not at all. And, and as Mark quite rightly says, he's, he's intelligent enough just to stay behind the ball so he can't be offside. Yeah. 
And there he is. That is, for a centre forward, that is the perfect goal. Look at this, Dion. Yeah. That is the perfect goal. You go, you leave it, you watch the ball, you see where it's got to be. I want to get in the box. I want to score a goal. I don't care who's in the way. He was just stronger. He's used his arms a couple of That's times. He all... used his arm to pin Murray to start Correct. with. Correct. And he used it then when running Correct. into the box to the Absolutely. other side. Absolutely. Yep. It's just perfect as a centre forward. What you're, what you're paid to do away from goals is get the ball in, hold it up, get your team up the pitch, pass it back, yep. get in the box. It's, it's not difficult. No. That is your number one job, even if you're not scoring goals, Correct. isn't it? You always Absolutely. say that. Even if I'm not scoring, be reliable. I have to be reliable. Correct. Keep, Absolutely. keep hold of the ball. And where I talk about being savvy and where it was a little bit more brutal in my day, Lukaku should have been fouled. As soon as Pablo Mari's got too tight and he pops it off, either block his run, make yourself big, yeah. pull a little shirt, clip a little bit of the ankles, yeah. don't allow him just to get a free no. run and get bullied in the box. And it's a classic example when you see the second goal. And the, the thing about the second goal is, like the first goal, everybody could see it in the mm, ground, and I'm sure yeah. at home watching around the world, you knew where Chelsea were going to attack yeah. because of where Arsenal's weakness was. But it stems, it stems from down this left-hand side, and you'd, you'd want to see as an Arsenal fan, you'd want to see these guys, and I'm talking about the Arsenal two on this right-hand side, you see Cedric at right-back, yeah. they get done far too easy, it's just a little give and go. You know, they're not strong enough, there's no one giving a foul away. Can Cedric go through the back of, of Alonso? Break the play up and then say, right, we'll defend a free kick from there. But when you just see it unfold, it's all just a little bit too easy, allowed to turn on the ball, no tackles going in. Look, that's where you could be yeah. having a little chop at the ankles. Xhaka gets done in a 50-50. And then more or less, exactly the same scenario with Kieran Tini. He smells the danger. Once that ball's played into Lukaku and there's no, there's no, there's no tackle on him, Kieran Tini is then yeah. tracked all the way back inside. And again, Dion... That big space yeah. for Rhys James. I think Kieran Tini, he's, trying, he's overcompensating mm. for other players around him that are not doing their job. So he's trying to do two and three jobs, therefore leaving his space all free. That, that, I mean, Saka again. Saka again, all he's got to do, 15 seconds before this happens, is get into a position where, where James thinks, oh, I, I can't go because I'm going to get marked. Yeah. Kieran Tini's doing too much. Lukaku's drawn three players towards him. Mm. Um, I don't. What, what are these players doing here? I don't understand. There's no communication. They don't talk to each other. These Arsenal players. Nobody takes responsibility. Yeah. You know, it's I, terrible. I, I thought it all stemmed from this area here. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Being allowed. Great play from Chelsea, by the way. But Arsenal just allowing terrible. basically Chelsea to play a couple of little one-twos. You close them down. Make a tactical foul. Yeah, Stop yeah. Chelsea from doing what they're going to do, and then you get Rhys James in an area like this. He's a great crosser yeah, yeah. of the ball. He's a great striker of the ball. You know what, Don? What sums up Arsenal here is, is the body language. When this ball goes in, if you watch the body language of the Arsenal players, they literally oh. go, 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 no goal, no goal. Oh, okay, fine, that's it. It's no, accepted. It's right, accepted. So, so, you got, so if, you're, if you're a coach, Dion, and this happens yeah. thousands of times during a week, 2v2s and whatever yeah. areas, mm -hmm. you would normally think, Mark, defenders would come out on top. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, yeah. Would, you would say high percentage. You would not say Chelsea are going to score from there. Chelsea are not <laughs> going to wriggle out of this no. situation. Someone has to put a tackle in. Cedric on Marcus Alonso. The Conga on you Kai see, Havertz. See, see, while this is going on, Don, he, here, while this is going on here, Don, you've got Saka is still ahead of the ball. Yeah. Now, when you're, out of, when you're out of possession, you have to get behind the ball or level with the ball and you'll be able to see the danger. Not seeing any danger. See, if, 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 if Max Alonso plays a little ball, let's just say he plays a little ball into that area or he goes backwards, yeah. you'd say job done. Yeah. The fact that it's so comfortable, he goes back for another one. He comes back in here and says, well, I've just wriggled out of a 2v2, I'm going to go and do it again. <laughs> so now it's a 3v2. How are they wriggling and out, they of this? out of this? they still get out of it, They still get out of it. Look, there has to be a snap in the tackle here when the ball's played into Kai Havertz. There has to be, if you can't win that ball, you get close to the touchline here now, tactical foul. You cannot let that scenario happen because now you think this is typical Chelsea, there's brilliant football, there's players in all sorts of space. Brilliant from Chelsea's point of view, brilliant but play. weak from Arsenal. Great, great, great first touch, great feeling. Look at the, look at the body language. I, I, I just cannot believe that there's nobody in that side that's pointing the finger. This Arsenal football club we're talking about, they should be top four all season. They should be pushing for the Premier League. On, on, on a performance like that, they'll do well to make top eight. So Ben White's obviously the most expensive defender and he's got COVID so he can't play. Why not then, when you've got... You're missing your first two mm -hmm. choice centre-backs and you've got Mary up against Lukaku and Mary yeah. wouldn't have slept. 
Why not match them up tactically? Why not play three at the back, play Tierney in the three, play Ta Tavares left back? And then arguably you wouldn't have Reese James in all that ridiculous mm. space, which has caused both goals, because you'd have matched them up system-wise. The only thing with that, though, is then you're saying, let's go man for man. Man for man, Chelsea. You're saying let's stay in the game as long yeah, as possible because they're a lot better than us. But man for man, Chelsea are better yeah, than us. I think the only thing with that you one try is... try and do yeah. something a little bit different where you think... And it's all, Arsenal are not just going to sit in mm. like a Burnley. They're not going to sit in like a Brighton and sit mm. in and go, right, we'll just soak up everything. Because that's not what you do. That's not, not what Arsenal do. So who's they try to do something. Who's that down there, that, that player? Arsenal. Can we see? Uh, Who's that? I can't quite see. Does that not sum them up? Just to accept him again. Were they a bit... Un, uh, you know, games always change on goals. So Chelsea two up and deserve it. Were they a bit unlucky, Arsenal, not to get a penalty on the stroke at half-time? Which, had they scored, it's a slightly different game going into the break. I don't think so. I mean, I have to say I thought Paul Tini did a great job, the referee. And this is one of those decisions where he, he's in a terrific position to make a judgment and you've got two players just running. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of contact. Well, I thought Saka caught Rhys James. Yeah, they both go to ground. And this is the thing, you know, is that clearly a penalty kick? I mean, you can't fault the referees in the position. Is it obviously wrong? I don't think it is. We're probably going to see a few of these through mm. the season and this was something that was discussed with but can we, can we I think we may disagree over here can, yeah. we, can we show that again what, because Saka's running towards the ball the counter argument is where is Rhys James running yeah. well, is that, Rhys James running towards that, the ball but he's not obliged to get out of the way neither no, that, no that, but he's running no. he's not running towards Correct. the ball he's running towards Saka do, do you see Rhys James foul and Saka or Saka clip in Reese James because that's what I, I, that's see, what I but, saw uh, but, I, but I see Reese James he isn't running towards the ball Reese James no. You know, well, I, I he's not running Chris, anywhere near the ball, Reese. James. What, what you said, Chris, is absolutely. We're going to see loads of these. Yeah. We're going to see loads of these. I think the ball's where you are, Don, and Reese sort of goes right yeah. mm. and steps over his gate. There's going to be loads of them. What would you say if a pen. penalty had been awarded? If a penalty was awarded, it wouldn't have been overturned. No. So it's it would have stayed with the on field decision. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the way. Mm. They're not going to unpick that decision. But what I would say is the referee was in the perfect position to make a judgment. So the thing about it is, sorry, are, we, are we saying no pens over here and two over there? Yeah. yeah, I'm saying pen. Yeah, yeah I'm saying 50, pen. 50. Fifty. Yeah, but I think I think we I think I'm happy to see the referee make a decision though. Yeah. I'd, rather than go, you know, I, I'm happy for him yeah. to take charge yeah. of the situation. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the first time ever Arsenal have lost the opening two games without scoring in a league, and it doesn't get much easier because there's Manchester City next as well. Then there's the international break, but they spent plenty of money over the summer as well, haven't they? So in a way, they've got themselves into a position where they can't even if they wanted to make a change, because they've invested all this money under Arteta. So you've got Norwich as the first game after the international That's the break, big one. then Burnley, then mm. Tottenham. That's the big one, Norwich. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's big for Mikel Arteta. Yeah, because, it's huge. Yes. You know, you stick Arsenal down against Man City, you'd see City heavy favourites. So there, there wouldn't be no surprise if City beat Arsenal, as I said, heavy favourites. But if they lost against Norwich, wow. And then they've got Burnley. Then Burnley. Well, does Which he get it, that far if, if they lose against Norwich? Yeah. I, I, you know, and Arsenal would want to put themselves in the Liverpool bracket. Size of club I'm talking now. Liverpool bracket in the uh, 